You know the funk don't always give you what you want, but it'll give you what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We never left. Yo, we back. NHFA in your face. Bringing you something good to your ear hole, y'all. Check it out. And it's our time, our time to shine. It's our time, our time to grind. It's the phone. Hey, 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 what's happening? How y'all doing today? Welcome to another edition of Funk from the Front Seat. Right here live, y'all. Coming on IBM TV right now. Um, what's happening out there? I hope everybody's hanging in there. We got a little Christmas spirit in the Funk Seat. So y'all just chill, sit back, relax. I know we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to discuss. Um, I'm going to be talking about some new sponsorship and things like that and talking about what's happening in the news and checking up on all my funky funker tears out there. I do have to make some disclaimers. I do have permission to play my own music. Okay, Nappy at Funk Army Music. And I'm not trying to um, be, you know, disgruntled, but Facebook um, and YouTube, please just just look it up. You'll see I am the Nappy Head Funk Army. Number one. Number two, I don't own or sell anyone else's music that I play. Let me repeat that. I do not own the rights to or sell any of the music that I play. But I do have permission. Like you're listening to right now. Next, next, y'all. Keep another phone. Roll call. Billy, where you at? Jersey in the house, New York City under the snow. You know I love you. You know how we go. Georgia in the house, Mikey P, Florida. I feel you down there. I love y'all. West Coast, California, Washington State. My girl Lisa Graham over there. Arts Awareness Program, blowing it up. Woo, Nevada, Texas, New Orleans, Oklahoma. Utah, y'all. Let's go across the water. Uh, uh, uh. Australia. How are all my mates doing down under, y'all? Love you, Carmen. Love you, Wendy. Y'all know what time it is. Woo, 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 woo. Germany. Steady crews in the house. Tanny Soul Sister bunking it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good on Gangsterville, y'all. Y'all know what we do. P Funk Radio. Yes, one of my sponsors. I love you, Keith Jackson. Thank you. Billy Phil down in Texas, another sponsor of mine. Yeah, man, it's all good. Get on the funk bus. Wednesday night, y'all gay. God Gonzalez doing his thing on P Funk Radio. Robin Danson, I see you out there. <laughs> Larry Funk, Katia Jones. Yeah, DC. Yes, 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 DC. Shop the City Alliance, y'all. Please put Nappy Head on the show in 2022. We're going to lose our minds if we don't play the ball. I love y'all for that. All my funky kids, are y'all ready to get lit? Are y'all ready to party? Light them up if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Drink if you got to Do what you got to do to get to 2021 so we can funk with you. You know how we go? Pump it up. Keep it of the funk right here. Woo! Funk from the front seat. Toast to the brigade. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's bring it in right. And please, don't give me any strikes today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm repping New York Jets. Thank you for Trevor. My hometown, New York. Y'all got to get that right. You know I love you, New York. I miss y'all. It's my home and my only home and the home, the only home that I know. Man, shout out to my family. Down in Virginia, my nieces and nephews down there, man. I love you all for that. Um, thank you for always supporting the show. So here we are. Welcome to another edition of Funk from the Front Seat. I see all my beautiful people hanging out there. Please drop me a line. Jump on the thread. Let me know some of your favorite Christmas stories that you want to share, and I'll be sharing mine with you. First of all, let's get it right now. Um, first responders, mad 
respect, shout outs. You guys have missed birthdays. You guys have missed anniversaries. You guys have been around so much loss of life. And we appreciate you. We love you. Um, what's up, Dr. Brookenstein? My man taking care of my website and taking on and, and as part of the Nappy Head Funk Army business team, Dr. Brookenstein. I'd like to make sure that I shout out the first responders because um, it's important. And we don't want you to think we forgot about you. We don't want you to ever think that, you know, you're less important now that we've gotten used to COVID, which is something we should never get used to. OK, so I just want to make sure that you guys know that. Um, and let me know if you guys can still hear me because I just plugged in my earpiece. So somebody just type something up and let me know if you can still hear me. Um, it's better for me after I do my live music intro to have my earpiece in. Um, so. First responders have been in the trenches since they've been working those jobs way before COVID, way before SARS, um, nurses, you know, people that um, actually clean and take care of the residents, you know, all the people all the way up to the doctors, all the way, thank you, Brooks, all the way down to the person that does laundry in a, in a, in a healthcare facility, that cleans the floors in a healthcare facility, your secretaries, your dietary staff, um, all the staff, and the healthcare community has to work together to make it go smoothly, you know, and, and it has to be no links in the chain. And these poor people, besides us out here that are dealing with it, have missed a lot of things in their life in 2020 as the rest of us. But they have been on the front lines while they're missing this stuff. They have children. They have families. They have mothers. They have fathers. They have lost people in their family close to them that they couldn't be with. Um, they've missed weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, special occasions, holidays, okay? We've all missed those, but they've missed them too. So please, if you see a first responder, please, I'm asking you, be kind. Take the extra two minutes to really tell them a sincere thank you. Don't just say, hey, I'm glad you guys are doing a good job. Really tell them how it impacts their lives and how you feel. Okay, so I wanted to get that out there and make sure. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff on Funk from the Front Seat right here at IBM.TV. First of all, I'm going to get to all my sponsors. Um, IBM.TV.TV Dollar Store, okay, I'm sponsored, you know, by Lynn Shepard. Um, is sponsoring, you know, IBM TV, and please continue to support them. Um, this show will actually be moving to another platform, but y'all going to still be involved in it. IBM has been really, really gracious, and, you know, we work together on some things, and, you know, they're really cool about supporting me, and I appreciate everybody at IBM.TV for doing that. Thank you. Um, and I'll still be doing some stuff with them on my Sunday shows. So, you know, I kind of want to test the waters, get out there, get out the nest, and fly around ah! and see what else is out there. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'll still always be, you know, doing some stuff with IBM, Nick and Kim and Ann Kit and Wayne and Mark, Lee and everybody's still always very cool to me. So I wanted to get that out there so you guys know. Now you know. So just stay tuned for that. I'll be dropping some blurbs all over social media and you'll find that out. OK, now, second of all, you know, I do have some new sponsorship that I want to bring in. You're going to be seeing them across the bottom of the screen today. You'll be seeing the scroll on all the people that are going to sponsor our new thing. And it's really going to be the old thing with just a new twist. You know what I mean? So after Glow 92416, you guys are amazing. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm always wearing your stuff somewhere. Oh, here, this off. I got to do everything reverse. Somewhere, I always have your stuff on. Donna Sneed, Benevolent Funk, Otis Hawk, Mikey P. Y'all are the bomb. Afterglow 92416. And as the show goes on, my main man, my brother, my funk brother from another mothership, Mark Lee behind the glass, making all of this happen. All right. So, you know, thank you, Mark, for doing that. Um, and then second of all, um, you know, P Funk Radio, another sponsor. Thank you, Keith Jackson, Brenda Robinson, the whole P-Funk radio crew. Y'all are always playing Nappy at Funk Army music. You guys break all the funk music usually first. Um, it's going to be on one of your great shows. You guys are amazing up in D.C. You've been doing it for 20, 25, 30 years maybe. I'm not even sure. But you guys always, 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 always are so supportive of every funk artist out there. So thank you, P-Funk Radio, you know, for doing what you do. Um, and also, too... Um, one of our other sponsors that we're going to be bringing on um, starting in January and February, um, Tony Cam, 
you know, thank you, Tony, for sponsoring the show. And, you know, I'll be supporting your gear, man. Um, so when Santa Claus drops it down my chimney, <laughs> I'll be supporting it, man. And Tony Cam is doing some amazing things. Tony Cam Funk All-Stars. Um, he's got, you know, his online stores popping. And he's got his gear and his website and his, his, his artwork and um, all his T-shirts and merch. Totally sick. Totally crazy. I am very fortunate to get one. Um, they will be another sponsor of mine. As well as we're going to be doing some things with Peppermint Patty. Um, uh, um, somebody's beaming in right now. So Peppermint Patty, as soon as they get busy, I mean, get done, because they've been so busy, you know, I do have some some information about some of the things, and I'm going to be showing her wine and Bootsy's wine, and, you know, we'll be talking about that a little bit, and, you know, hopefully they can come on and do some sponsorship for us, but we'll see. But, you know, Patty and Bootsy are always tremendously kind. Um, you know, they made me a Club Funkity ambassador, um, and shout out to Club Funkity ambassadors out there, especially our El Presidente, uh, you know, Mr. Funkster Jones. So thank you, Funkster Jones, for that. And also, too, um, one of our Club Funkin' Ambassadors recently lost his mom, and I'm not going to forget that. So, you know, peace and love to you, um, and I pray for you and your family. But, you know, we're going to have some, some new things popping in 2021 because that's what we got to do. We got to keep going. We cannot just stay stagnant. We cannot stay straight. Whatever you're doing out there, whatever your dreams are, whatever your goals are, whatever your life force tells you to do, as long as it's positive and good, y'all got to really get into it. There is no time to wait. Another one of our sponsors will be KHX Entertainment, Mr. Kevin Harrington. You know what I mean? So, yeah, right there, I got about six sponsors, man. And they're going to be pumping some stuff through constantly, merchandise, CDs, or whatever. Um, in 2021, I'm going to be doing some giveaways. That's right. Y'all heard it first. I'm going to be doing some giveaways, you know, as soon as the economics allow for that. Excuse me. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing some different things with people's music and everything. John Groove, Alicia Willis, and, you know, Eric J got some new stuff out. William Press Bush, you know, so I'm going to make sure I get swag from them, CDs and things like that. And then, you know, we'll do a little something over the course of time, maybe once once every couple of weeks, I'll be doing a giveaway of some of their stuff because I got a lot of people supporting this show. So it's going to be really, really cool. 2021 is going to jump off, and I'll tell you, S-S-A-T-V is coming. All right, so y'all keep that in mind. Just a little sprinkle out there to let y'all know what's going on. S-S-A-T-V. Don't tell nobody. All right, now, I'm going to start off with something that's really important. I'm going to get to the... The the, the 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 Trump stuff, but I gotta say this: the pros and cons. And I wasn't gonna start my segment with this. I usually script everything and then I jump around. But the pros and cons of streaming services. Okay, there's a lot of pros and cons to it. It's like the left and the right hand. If you guys remember Napster back in the day, and Philly Phil and I was just talking about this on the phone the other day. Hey, what up, bro? Love you, man. Um. Napster back in the day um, was was this this new thing where everybody was just taking music and it was all over the place and nobody could control it and publishing companies were going crazy. BMI, which I'm a member of, ASCAP, CSAC, which I used to be in, and and all the other major ones were losing their mind because their music was put out there and um, and you can see across the bottom of the boot cave. So y'all check that out. Um, you can see that. You know, thank you, Mark. Love you, man. Um, it was going to become this thing that we are now. But because of all of these streaming services that have wanted to get their hands in the pie, you know, and they want you to play through them and buy their services so that they can, so, quote, unquote, protect you. I'm not really sure where that's at. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. Here's what I'm saying. I have music out. Right. And you can see my sponsorships are going to be popping up all throughout the show from now on. I have music out. Right. So I got dinged on my own stuff. Right. Now, I'm not mad at YouTube. I'm glad they're protecting me. I'm glad they're watching. OK, that's good. That's one of the pros. Right. Um, you know, when you when you get to a point to where, um, you know, you're in your car and you're doing a show and you do put out disclaimers. There needs to be a more 
clear kind of guideline for something like that, because I feel then that's a massive overreach. I'm actually in my personal space. Yes, I'm doing a show, but I'm in my personal space and I am not selling anyone's music for profit at all, period. I'm not doing that. I'm not promoting it for me. I'm promoting it for the artists, which the artists do like. So I think there's going to have to be a little bit more of a common ground and they're going to have to lower the price of this stuff. Um, one of the, the, the companies, you know, I'm not going to mention the name, but, you know, they'll protect you for 250 and then you got to join this other thing for like $400. You know what I mean? So it comes out to almost be like a thousand dollar thing that you got to do, you know, just to be able to make people happy because everybody wants their one tenth of a penny to get. Now, I get the one tenth of a penny. They all add up. But what I don't understand is that if you make a disclaimer or or you're telling people, listen, hey, go to Afterglow 92416, um, Toast to the Boogie, go to the bootcave.com, you know, go to nextexit.com or go to nappyheadfunkarmy.com. If, if, you're, if you're doing that or go to tonycam.com, if you're doing that and you're telling people, listen, check out these sites, you know what I mean? Um, and it, 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 and you're, you're basically steering traffic somewhere else so they can then sell their music and make money from it, okay? So that's one of the cons that I don't understand. I'm not on the street corner bootlegging Bootsy Collins CDs, all right? That's illegal. We know that. I never bootlegged one CD in my life, you know what I mean? Um, so there has to be some kind of common ground. I understand the spirit of the law. I understand the spirit of what YouTube is trying to do and Facebook. And you guys are great. I love YouTube. Don't get me wrong, man. We couldn't do this stuff without you. So this is no slam against you. Um, the YouTube robots or the YouTube powers that be in Facebook know that I do love what y'all do. I've never once been kicked off any platform. Okay. So that means I must be doing something right. I've never been in Facebook jail or none of that. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to look at the greater good. Every now and then, I got to ring the Christmas bells because um, December 7th, it was the day my mom died, and December 30th is my father's birthday, and someone that I love very, very dearly, um, birthday coming up. So when you hear me ring the bells, it's for all those angels around me, right? Um, so yeah, so so I just wanted to get that out there. You guys can let me know your comments, thoughts, whatever. Hit me back on Facebook. Let me know the pros and cons of how you feel about it, um, you know, and then we can talk about it on another show. So having said that, um, I'm almost afraid now what I can cannot play. I was doing a lot of Bootsy Collins to add his permission. So I'm almost afraid now of what I can and can't do only because I don't really want strikes against me. You know what I mean? Or strikes against IBM or strikes against, you know, the new thing that I'm getting ready to drop because I want to do things the right way. So you guys let me know if you have any information out there about this. Believe me, I've been researching it. Give me more information. Give me more input. Let me know. Because those are the rules that I want to follow. And, and when I'm promoting, you know, um, you know, the Groovalicious Project or the KHX experiment or, you know, William Bush and his new thing, you know, I'm supporting that for a reason because I believe in what they're doing. All right. So I'm actually doing little miniature infomercials. And you can see across the bottom, if you look at us in great gifts, check it out. Go to the bootcave.com. Check it out. Bootsy's in the house with all his great stuff he's doing. And him and Peppermint Patty are, you know, charitable and they're out in the world and they reach around the world every day. They're putting out positive videos. This is for you, Bootsy and Patty. Love you, right? P Funk Radio, Friday night, stress relief party, Keith Jackson, Wednesday night. Gabe Don Gazala, Gazala, crushing it with all his dope mixes. And Joe Gabe, hook me up, man, with that mix of, um, you know, um, Revolution. I know you said you did one. Yeah, man. And Philly Phil, get on the funk bus. I'm always riding in the back of the bus, bouncing, uncut funk. Philly Phil, and he's doing some great things. And, man, there's a great basketball coach down in Texas, you know. So there are people that are still doing some really, really outrageously amazing things, you know, to help keep funk alive. And, of course, keep us other funk, you know, um, and Next Exit and Michael P and Michael Get On Brown and all those beautiful people in that band and Benevolent Funk and Otis Hawk, who I'm going to be working with. And I'm so glad, baby. Thank you for coming into our lives. The Nappy and Funk Army, we love you, we respect you, and I appreciate that. So thank you. And, you know, as, as you do something in life, 
Um, the object is to grow. So sometimes our growth is stunted by things around us that we see, that we um, interpret. And, and I've been um, guilty of this for a long time. Um, I have two or three really great life coaches. Um, Chrissy Key Rollins, I love you. You're, you're one of the best life coaches I ever had. Um, Tish Oakley, you know, I love what you're doing with your energy. Kevin Harrington, one of my other life coaches, you know, um, along with Jeff Robeson. Those are about the four people that I vibe with and talk with about things when it's bothering me. And believe me, if you have something on your mind that's stressing you or is bothering you or, or, or you feel in some kind of way, please reach out to somebody. Know that we care. Know that we love you. You can always reach out to me. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm all over the place. Don't ever feel like you're alone. I see too many people typing things and I'm alone, this and that. And I had to learn this. And people told me, no, nah, you're not alone. People got your back. You just got to be willing to reach out. It's okay to talk to somebody about something. I don't care if it's in the middle of the night. You text me. I'm usually up anyway. I hit you back. I'll make sure I get to you because I care about you. And I love y'all out there. I, I sincerely love y'all out there. So so getting back to um, some things that, that's going on that we need to really, really touch base with. Um, and I'm going to save my favorite Christmas stories kind of for the end. But 300 and, I don't know, over 10,000. 310,000. I want y'all to let that number sink in for a minute. 310,000 as of last night. Okay. So, simple. You always see my mask hanging. And I got a red one because it's Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Two little things. OK, now I'm going to relate this to something. And I was talking to my producer, Mark, about this a minute ago. Back in World War Two and World War One. And Mark, I'll bring you back on this later and see if we can make that connection. But we'll revisit this um, at the end of the show. Um, and you can see Tony Cam stuff going on the bottom. Love you, TC. People were asked in America. Women were asked to go work in bomb factories, sacrificing their time for their children sacrifice all right women were also asked to um join the military and um become nurses and become you know people behind the scenes you know mailing out letters um to those that lost people in world war ii world war one they were also asked to do a lot of the dirty work you know um what's up how you doing merry christmas yes i love you i love you too lady three thanks for joining in they were asked to do all these great things. Yes, and, and I, I could be Santa Claus. <laughs> I could be. I'm in disguise today. Yeah, I love that. That's me, man. Cool. Thank you for joining. Um, here we are on Funk from the Front Seat Live right here. And I'm digging all the responses I'm getting. They were asked to do a lot of great things, right? They made sacrifices to be patriotic. And that, that's what I want you guys to hang on to. Sacrifice to be patriotic. Whether they were black, white, brown, Puerto Rican, Native American, it didn't matter. One of the biggest heroes in the wars was always the Native American soldiers. Um, the generals in, in the United States used their code, their language, and their gift of, of, of sign language and their gift of, of intelligence of how to speak, um, you know, with certain codes. They were called the wind talkers. So if y'all want to know something, y'all look that up about the wind talkers. Native Americans, man, they help save this country. And they get treated the worst by far. And that's a shame. But y'all go ahead and look up the wind talkers. I know all about it, right? Um, I do read a lot. So, you know, it's not that I have, you know, any extra knowledge. I just like to read because I like to, to, to get books in my hand, tangible. And all of these people made huge, tremendous sacrifices to be patriotic. Black men and women fought in a country that didn't even let them come back and, and ride in the front of the bus. Patriotic, right? Um, you know, um, getting killed, raped, beaten, along with the Native Americans, along with the Mexicans and, and Hispanic people and brown people. Asian Americans in this country were put in internment camps, okay? Um, again, we're calling it patriotic. I call it housing unnecessary prisoners that you think are prisoners just because their skin is the same color as the country they came from. Eh, wrong. That was wrong. But again, all in the name of patriotism. Fast forward to where we are. Okay. Is being a patriot 
carrying a machine gun standing on the steps of a government building. Is that patriotism? And I'll let y'all answer the questions. All right. Walking into a store knowing you could be infected with COVID and not caring about the other people around you, not even caring about the poor man or woman or young girl or young boy that works behind the counter that has to stock the shelves in the smaller stores, your mom and pop stores, your BPs, your shelves, your gas stations, your corner stores. What about them? You don't want to wear a mask. They have to stock shelves. You walk in the store, touching this, touching that. I'm going to get this. No, I'll put that back. What about those poor people? But you don't want to wear a mask, but yet you call yourself a patriot. Okay? What about all the people that are first responders? And are telling you, if you get them sick, if you get sick, they won't be there to take care of you. Yet, you still call yourself a patriot. I'm just trying to understand what changed from World War II to 2020. And I think we all know the common denominator. All right? It's the leadership. It's the man that is now exiting the White House. Thank God. All right. Hopefully, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris can get this up and running. It's going to take them a minute. Yeah, that's for you out there. It's going to take them a minute. But I don't think I am any less patriotic or you're any less patriotic because you want to protect yourself and others. So how did that become a thing where my health and safety, your health and safety has to be split? in some kind of BS bullshit party, okay? Because Republicans and Democrats, liberals, independents, or if you don't vote at all, right, you can still catch the virus, okay? So my question, and, and I pose this to you out there, um, think about what a patriot really is. Um, what are we supposed to do? Yes, we've been treated horribly in this country and still are. And I'm going to get to that young man in Ohio. You know, you notice they swept that under the rug again. You know, he's walking home, coming from Subway, you know, coming back from the dentist. No intention to harm anybody. I don't know if it's true, but they said he had a carry permit. So Why did he get killed? On his step. Chicago, two days ago. And this bothers me. This one, this one is deep. Excuse me for a minute. Chicago, two days ago, they bum rushed the lady's house. She had, she, she was naked, okay? And they rumbled, rumbled and ravaged through her house and then apologized and said, I'm sorry, we got the wrong house. Again, you know, they don't do that to white people. They don't. They don't. When was the last time you heard, saw a white man or woman or a young person standing in their home uh, with no clothes on and the police are ransacking their house. So, now that we get all this on video, we see what's been going on that we know in the black and brown and Native American community all along. We see it. It's on the news. It's on the body cam cameras. It's on um, phone cameras. So, how is it that that stuff is happening? You don't want to be a patriot, but you ain't trying to stop none of that stuff. And these people are American patriots. But you choose to stand on the Capitol in Michigan with machine guns threatening and harming people. You choose to be down in Georgia threatening those government officials, sending them death threats to their kids because they didn't vote like you wanted them to vote and they wouldn't lie about it and change it? Come on. Patriotism. Is that patriotism? And I'm going to call your name, Mitch McConnell, holding things up when people are starving, people are on bread lines. There is no Christmas for a lot of people. There is no um, way to to make ends meet. Sheriffs are evicting people by the thousands right here in North Carolina. 
which I hate. What happened to that law? That expires December 31st. So then where are people going to go? In the cold weather, in the heat. What are you going to do? Turn America out into the streets with COVID and let yet you expect to get rid of it? Mitch McConnell and all the people up there that's holding this bill up and all the people that won't kick out stimulus checks of $1,200, not $600, $1,200 or even more. I hope you all look in the mirror. I hope you all sleep well at night knowing that you are the disgrace and the demise of patriotism. You feel me? You want to be a patriot? Do the right thing by the very people that's holding this country up. Holding it by a thread, no less. With COVID. With black violence. With crime on crime. With racism. With systemic poverty and racism. And don't even get me started about health care. That's a whole nother show. So, again, World War II. Now, have we changed much? I don't think so. And that's just my humble opinion right here on Funk from the Front Seat. Again, I want to thank, you know, all the sponsors for hooking me up. We got some good things coming. I love you too, David Brooks. We got a lot of stuff popping in 2021. We're going to keep moving. Yes, we did pivot a little bit. But it's all good because usually when you pivot, you see something over there or over there that you haven't seen before and you want to go try that out. It's like being at a carnival. You don't want to ride the same ride all the time. You know what I mean? So thank you for that. IBM TV TV dollar store, the shepherd. Thank you for that. And my new sponsors coming on board. Be Funk Radio JTRP Jackson, man. I'm loving that. Philly Phil Uncut Funk. Get on the funk bus. Tony Cam and the Funk All Stars and check out Tony Cam's website. Also, Peppermint Patty, Bootsy Collins doing all the great things that they're doing. We love you for that. Love to funk you, Funkenstein. Your funk is the best. Take my body and give it the mind to funk with the rest. Hit me with the one and then. If you like, hit me again. We love you, Funkenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to George Clinton, the man who started all of this funk stuff. I tip my hat. I'd love to have you and your lo lovely wife, Alan, on the show. Please contact me. I'm not doing no harm. Like you said, we won't do you no harm, brother. You know, I just want to have some fun and funk around. And I'm one of your funk disciples that you spread it about all across the world way back when. And I'm still here. P Funk so deceived. Nappy head grew in the weed, Joe. Now it's a funky party trying to get our funk on, if you please. So, y'all out there, follow. It's going to be cool. Um, we dropping some serious SSA TV coming too. Yeah, it's going to be all that and then some, you know. Right now, it's a lot of legalities going on, stuff like that, man. Shouts out to Bill. I love you, Bill. Can't wait to see you real soon, bro. Um, you know, all the new shows, you know, that we're going to be listing when we start our thing and pay attention to Black History Month because Black History Month, we're going to be dropping the serious on y'all. So I need everybody up on that. And I'll be doing like some serious promotion at the end of January before Black History Month. All right. Christmas story time. Santa Claus. And let me put on my Santa hat because it's time for a Christmas story. Yeah, my favorite Christmas stories. I'm going to get into that with you. Hold on there. Let me get this right. I got to be able to see. Um, Christmas is a very special time of year. It was always, for me, um, you know, because my mother died so young, I always had my sister, older sister. She was like my mom. Her name is Geneva Mills, and I love you, Geneva. Rest in peace. You know, so when I was little, you know, um, and my father was a Baptist minister, I was a PK. So that meant on Christmas Day, I was in church all day. And then Christmas, if it fell on a different day than Sunday, I was in church all day and so had to go to church on Sunday. But that's why I learned a lot of my life skills, um, a lot of my music, a lot of the stuff that I got away from that I'm back into now. My spirituality was always planted in me at an early age because my parents were always, you know, um, good faith Baptist um, followers and you know they believed in the bible and so did my sister and all that good stuff so you know some of that's in me it's always going to be in me you know and again man shouts out to new york jets 
and my hometown, New York. I love y'all. I miss y'all. Stay safe. You know, we thank you for Trevor, so I just had to get that in there. Okay? So, um, I remember um, when I got my first it's Funky Claws time. That's right. I re and Brooks, drop me one of your stories, bro. I remember when I first, I got my first real bicycle, right? It was a red, it was called a red glider bicycle, right? And it, it, it had all the bells and whistles, the little tassels on the side, had a basket in the back, right? Um, and the tires were big. They were white walls, right? And I got it from, and shout out to Bayshore. I don't know if it's still there, but my father bought it from Schwinn down on Union Boulevard in Bayshore. So for anybody in Bayshore that knows about that store, Schwinn was the only bike store in the town. So, and I knew I was getting a bike um, because my father told me, hey, I'm going to get you a bike. Because after my mom died, we didn't really like hide presents. My father didn't do all of that. He just said, this is what you're going to get and pick out what you want and we went to a place called Farmer's Market, and they had the stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll get this, i get that, whatever. And then I'd put it under the tree. Um, some of it I would just wrap just because it was just me and my father. I would just wrap some of his stuff, the little clay um, um, ashtrays and the cups and things we used to make at school. I would wrap that up for him, and we'd have our Christmas, just me and him, right? And we go over to my sister's house after and everybody be partying. My nieces and nephews over there will be partying, drinking, listening to a lot of Motown. And that's where I developed and got into Motown sound. Um, you remember getting toys like that? Yeah, it seems like my dad was playing with more. Yes, fathers did that. And, and that's what they did. That's right, show business. That's right. Because, you know, um, fathers love Christmas. They may be rough and, and bristly all year long. But at Christmas time, there's some love that comes out of a father's heart. I know for a fact. And, and thank you for that comment. Because I know my dad used to make tents with me in the house, you know, and pretend that we were camping. And, and, and he used to um, set up my trains in the basement because he was into trains. That's why I, I always got a train set. And he would set this stuff up and we'd sit down there for hours. You know, he'd be smoking his pipe. And I'll never forget the smell of that pipe. He smoked feel and stream pipe tobacco. And every time I smell that now, I think about my dad. Oh, man, yeah. So so, so he used to do all this stuff. So I remember getting his bike, right? Now, mind you, this was 1967. So if anybody on Long Island remembers the blizzard of 1967, okay, I was nine years old. It was a blizzard, just like it is up there now. The snow literally was up to my gate. And that's like a three foot and a half gate. Okay. Snow everywhere. The plow would come down the street because we lived next to Fifth Avenue, which was a main street. But the plow would come down the street. And I'm talking Long Island, not in the city. And he would clean up Clinton Avenue. Right. And we'd be all out doing out there. What's up, man? Yo, your dad was still living and used to smoke a pipe too. Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up many years ago. That's right, man. God bless you, man. Thank you. Uh, another gentleman just chimed in with that. So, 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 right? There was like one little path to walk, and the cars would have the tracks on the other side. Me, and I'll tell you another story after this was going to really make you laugh. But me, my foolishness, I'm like, I'm riding my bike. Right? My father's like, listen, you can't ride your bike. It's a blizzard out in snow. I begged him. I was like, Dad, please. He's like, no, it's going to get rusty. And you know how parents were strict back then. They didn't have much money. So if they bought you something, they meant it to last. You had to take care of it. I begged them for like an hour. And finally, the snow let up. And my best friend, one of my best, I had two best friends growing up on Clinton Avenue. Actually, three. Donna Adams, who lived on my right. Ronald Flippett, who lived um, three houses away. And my godbrother, Raymond Bussey, who lived four houses away. And my friend Ronald Lito up the street. But he, he wasn't really my best, best friend, but he was my, my close friend, right? Ronald knocks on my door. He knew I had got the bike. Now, he comes over, and he's wearing his cowboy gear that he had got for Christmas. Caps. He had caps, right? So he's like, pop, 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 and playing with his toys. Now, me, I'm sitting in the house. I'm playing with my train set, but I'm looking at the bike. I'm eyeing the bike. I'm like, please, I got to get this bike out, right? So the snow let up. And I asked my dad, please, just let me ride it down the street, right? So I get, I couldn't even get out of the house. 
I had to literally like walk through mounds of snow. And you see me doing it. You guys know what I'm talking about. When you step on the snow and it goes down and comes up over your boots, those rubber boots with the metal clips that never used to keep your feet dry. Your feet used to freeze like ice cubes and those things. But that's all I had. So I'm walking down. I'm carrying my bike as best I can. Me and Ronald carrying my bike so it doesn't get snow on it. So I don't want to get into trouble. So we get the bike in that one little path, right? And I was so anxious and so happy to ride it, right? And, and I rode up and down, right, back and forth on that one little path, which could have only been about the length of two houses. You know, and on Long Island, the houses have yards. And, and I would say it would have been like a half a city block. And I was back and forth riding that bike. I rode it, I rode it, I rode it. And I'll never forget, right, when I came in the house, how happy my father was because he really knew how much I really loved that bicycle. And to this day, I remember that story because my father and I had a bond, um, you know, and it was close. And when he died, man, he was my best friend. It was everything. I was devastated. I was 21. I didn't know. I had no direction, no nothing in life, right? But, you know, he, he, he was everything. He used to take me fishing. Um, he used to, you know, come to see all my football games he came to, you know, in Little League and junior high school and high school, came to those. And he would come to all my plays. And I was always into dramatic arts at school, and he would come to that. I played in the orchestra. He would come to that. You know, so my dad, as best he could, you know, was always there. He was my mother and my father. Between him and my sister, they had to become like my mother, you know. And I had a stepmother for a while, but she didn't really take, didn't count three years. And eh, we won't talk about that. So another story I got to tell you, please share your stories with me. We're here live on Funk from the Front Seat, man. I'm reading your comment right now. It might have been an we got a, a Pong set. Yes, I remember Pong. See, I was already a little bit past that because I'm a little bit older. But Pong, for those of you that don't know, it basically was this. It was like a tennis game, right? One of the, the first, if I'm not mistaken, and a gentleman can correct me, the first, and all it was was like a square block, right? And it bounced on the screen like this, pong, pong, pong. And you had a little thing on the bottom that could slide next to it and hit it, and then it would go up. And then wherever it went, you had to slide that thing and hit it up. And you could play by yourself, or you could play with an opponent. I, yeah, and I remember when that came out. I think I was in my early 20s when Pong first came out. Yeah, because um, Michael Jackson beat it. That album that just came out. What's up, Brooks? You remember Wait for a Train set for Christmas? <laughs> but you didn't get it? You got Hot Wheels racing car instead? I know, you really wanted that train set. But yo, Brooks, don't sell the Hot Wheels short, especially the one that came down and had the loop, you know, even though it wasn't as much fun as the train set. But I had Hot Wheels, too. <laughs> I had hot ones. I remember that, bro. Yo, man, that's what's up. You know, and these memories, this is what keeps us keeps us alive. Um, this is what the world is all about. That's why you like riding trains because you never got a train. Well, you know what? One day, Brooks, I'm gonna get enough money and I'm gonna buy you an engine, a real live engine, and you could drive that sucker back and forth from Philly to New York, DC, wherever you want. All right, I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Why you love trains? Isn't it amazing how? Certain things in life we remember. Dr. Brookenstein says he remembers what he wanted. He begged for it, but he got Hot Wheels instead. And maybe the train set was sold out. I don't know. Um, I'm sure your parents meant to do as best they could, man. But I remember, speaking of Hot Wheels, I remember when they first came out. We all It was in the middle of the summer. My father had to get me that. It was also the time you were catching up with your cousins and relatives. Yeah, man. Showbiz 62 says, yeah. And, you know, it was good because, again, and I get that because, like I said, I was always at my sister's house. And Showbiz 62 was checking up with his cousins and family, which was great. The only thing I hated is when you went to somebody's house or family member and brought your father or mother would tell you, listen, you can only bring one toy, right? And you would bring that one toy and one of your cousins would break it or mess with it. You know, it's Christmas Day, and you're like, damn, I just got it. You know what I'm saying? Or they would want to play with it more than you, or they wasn't playing with it, right? I was very possessive as a child. 
<laughs> like, no, you're not doing it right. You know what I'm saying? But it's funny. We have these memories because they meant something to us at the time. And, and the reason we remember them is because they mean something to us now. And that was the purpose of the show today, why I wanted my main topic to be about Christmas memories. Because we are not where we should be, nor do we have, do I have a secret Santa? No, I do not. I, I'm, right now, I'm divorced by myself. I don't have no secret Santa. There's a few people that I love and care about. I'll make sure they get Christmas cards. But all my jobs, we always did secret Santa. You know, we did a little something to nappy head like that, too, as well. We were always gigging and playing. You know, and I was always playing around the holidays with Creations Music up in New York, one of the best main corporate wedding band companies I ever worked with. Shout out to Richard and Kim. I'm kind of still with them, but I worked for them for 30 years. We played the Twin Towers. We played the Copa. You know, we played stuff at the y in, in Washington, D.C. We played um, all over the place. You name it, we did it. Had huge, tremendous weddings at the Manhattan Center. Was on the same show with Taylor Day. Played with George Thurgood. And the, you know, so so we, we, we that part of my, my showbiz my entertainment thing was always working around the holidays, but as I got older. But going back to to Brooks's Hot Wheels story, in the middle of the summer, I remember Hot Wheels came out. It was like the new thing; had to have it. So my father, I asked him. I was like, "Listen, take all my money that I make from cutting grass, right?" And add it with some money that maybe you can put it. And I think the whole thing only cost about 20 bucks. But back in the 70s, $20 was a lot of money, man. It, was, it really was. So my father bought it. And Brooks, I had the one with the loop and the two cars I had. I'm going to tell you how vivid these memories are from my, from my dad buying me toys. I had an orange, brownish El Dorado with a black top. And I had a green Chevy SS396, right, with a black top. It had the stripe on the side. Because Hot Wheel always gave you two cars, right? Those were the two cars I got, right? Which is why I still collect miniature cars today. Um, it's funny because a lot of times, excuse me, a lot of times when we have these memories, right, just making sure my phone stays charged, a lot of times when we have these memories, um, we, we, we reminisce but we don't really get a chance to feel that feeling, you know. And a day like today, I want everybody to reminisce and feel a feeling of, of those wonderful times, man. Um, you know, all, all the people out here that are doing positive things in the world, there are so many of you, and I love you all for this. You're all doing great. So just keep that up. I know it's hard, and I know sometimes we're driving and we day, days off and we're not paying attention, and then we wake up. It's like behind the steering wheel, and we're like, damn, I was way somewhere else, you know? Even though you're focused on the road and everything, but our mind tends to drift. So when you feel like your mind is drifting into a negative place, stop, drop, and reboot, okay? Because right now, keep all your positive energy for everything that's coming that's good in your life. Think about all the things that you want to manifest that's peaceful, that's loving, that's good, and call people up and do what we're doing now. Because it makes us feel good. I know you guys feel good. I feel good. Let's chat about our Christmas stories. It's no shame. You know, there were good ones and bad ones. I remember sometimes some of my relatives would get drunk and step on some of my stuff. No, I didn't like it. You know, I remember when somebody stole some of my stuff. No, I didn't like it. But those memories are there nonetheless. But I'm talking about the good memories. Yes, I remember the bad ones. But the good ones overshadow the bad ones. You know, I had to overcome that. Personally, because my mother died on December 7th, 1965. I was only seven years old. Christmas was two weeks away. So I still had to overcome that and try to figure out, wow, this is an odd time for this death to be happening and try to understand how my mother left me. I had to figure all of that out. And not just me. I talked to lots and lots of people. We all have a special bond. We know each other when we see each other because we talk about how we had a dramatic loss of one of our parents early on in life. And that will affect you, okay? Whether they left or whether they died or whether something tragic happened or it was a natural cause, whatever it is, it will affect you as a child. But you have to overcome that. This is why a lot of times when I was single, I never really thought about Christmas because it really didn't mean that much to me. But And then when I got married and I had kids and, 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 I, and I get that, that new, renewed energy of the spirit of giving and love and all the good things that happened with my... Oh yeah. Ring the bell. 
all the good things that happen, um, you know, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel better. And I'm able to share these stories with you guys, man. So thanks for, for that. Again, we're hanging out. Thanks to all the sponsors and everything on Funk from the front seat. We got a lot of new stuff popping. We're going to be dropping some brand new stuff um, and try to get this Nappy Head Funk Army CD finished as well. Um, you know, Matt, shouts out to all the sponsors. Don't forget, go to thebootcave.com and check that out. You know, Bootsy Collins and Peppermint Patty all around the world. Club Funketeer. I'm a Club Funketeer ambassador, and I love promoting all of this stuff. I do have permission to play their music, but out of respect for YouTube and Facebook, I will not because I don't want any strikes until I get that taken care of. And I love y'all, and I know Facebook and YouTube and all the other platforms. I know we can work together and make this amicable for everybody, okay? And don't forget, go to my man Tony Cam's website and check it out, man. He's got a lot of stuff that he's dropping. Personally, I'm waiting on Santa Claus to bring me one of his things, and I'm going to be supporting that. After Glow, 92416, my crew, Benevolent Funk, Otis Hawk. Y'all loving y'all, man, and, and, you know, go support them. A toast to the boogie, you know what I mean? A toast to the boogie is very, very important. Keep the funk alive, the keepers of the funk, okay? So y'all go check that out. And also, P-Funk Radio. Thank you, Keith Jackson, JTRP, the man behind the glass, spinning all the funk the last 20, 25 years, man. Philly Phil uncut funk down there in Texas. All right? So I know a lot of weird stuff is happening down there, y'all. But you know what? Um, we all just have to keep our eyes on the prize at this point. You know, um, I was watching this thing about Jesse Owens, you know, and how he knew back at home um, black men and women were being raped, maimed, killed, tortured, beheaded, um, drugged through town, tarred and feathered, homes and houses, terrorized by the Klan, um, no jobs, unemployment, lack of education, no food, living in squalor. He knew that. He knew that. But that man was such a great patriot Again, y'all claim to be patriots out there that don't want to follow a simple mask rule. Imagine being him. He's in Germany during World War II. Hitler is standing up there. And what does he do? On your mark, get set, go. He took off. Not only did he participate in situations that would probably kill most of us as an athlete, I am not, but I can only imagine the scrutiny, the pressure, running for the whole world when back at home his race doesn't even have equality. Same as the black men and women, the Native American women, Asian and, 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 and um, Latin, Mexican men and women that fought in all these wars and then back home, they can't even get any kind of sense of decency handed to them, even with their uniform on. Jesse Owens, and if you watch that video, you can see he was toying with that cat. He was like, all right, I'm going to let you get ahead for a little while. Then I'm going to shift him to that gear, which most black athletes have. You ever watch football and you see a guy catch a pass, poof, and then the cat's running with him. And then the other guy's like, like Deion Sanders, one of my favorite players, shift it to that next gear. <laughs> and then it's over, right? Halfway through that race, I think it was 100 meter, right? J Jesse put did did that little thing and and he he shifted into that gear and when he hit that gear it was a wrap he stands up there accepts his gold medals with dignity with honor with respect as a black man and a black athlete in a time where there weren't even any NBA black players really right um I'm not sure if Jackie Robinson had broken the color barrier in baseball yet. Oh, interesting fact. Um, they just put a lot of the um, black baseball teams, they made them major league teams from the Negro Leagues, so their stats will now count. So, yes, Josh Gibson and those guys and Satchel Page, their stats will now count as major league baseball stats. And kudos to major league baseball for finally doing that. It should have happened a long time ago. So Jesse Owens stands up there, accepts his gold medals or medals, wears his crown, right, with dignity, respect, 
And most of all, he was a patriot. Only to come home and have to ride in the back of the bus. All right? So y'all let that sink in about what patriotism really is today. And, you know, I ain't putting nobody down. We don't do any hater raid on this show. Um, it's not about that. You know, a lot of cats, they want to get into that. That's not my thing. That's why I want to have all the funk musicians on my show. I love all of y'all, man. I ain't hating on nobody. There's no competition. There's none of that. Everybody got a little bit of funk to add to the canvas. Some more than others, but some still add some. It's okay. Add what you can. Get in where you fit in. That's what Gary Scheider told me. Get in where you fit in. That's what George Clinton always said. You don't have to be the best. Just got to outlast the rest. See what I'm saying? So y'all check that out. Today was a really fun show. I'm going to bring my man on Mark Lee right now because I want to talk to him about something. So jump in for me, Mark, if he's there. I know Mark is a hardworking man. He's actually working while he's working. So, you know, you go figure that out, you know. But we're going to end with some Nappyhead Funk Army music, which I do have the rights to play, which I did send him my information, my permission slip to actually play my music. But getting back to um, being a patriot, not being a patriot, and thank you all for sharing those Christmas stories. You guys are amazing. Uh, please hit me up on Facebook. Um, you know, please follow me on Instagram, Zach W9 on Instagram. You can hit my website, nappyheadfunkarmy.com, you know. And again, stay tuned. S S A T V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark! Get yeah. How you doing? His mic is muted, but it's okay. We'll keep rapping. So, it's been a really, really interesting 2020. It's been a very, very interesting um, time of year. Um, we got this vaccine that some of us are trying to get. Still getting that echo. Yeah, Mark, you got to kill that echo for me. Thank you. Um, and I'll just finish what I'm doing, man. It's um time of year where some of us may feel like you're not doing enough for your families, right? Some of us may feel that you're letting your families down. Let me tell you something. Look into my eyes. I'm going to tell you this. You are not letting your family down, okay? You don't have to feel some type of way. As a parent, I know that feeling, right? Just think about it in terms of this. As long as we are here, we will see many, many more Christmases, New Year's, birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. All right? Um, my condolences to anyone that are losing people to COVID. It can happen to anybody. Um, my condolences. Um, I love you guys. And I feel for you. I know I lost my cousin to COVID. Okay? Um, Birthdays and anniversaries, if it's today, happy birthday. And if it's your anniversary, it's your anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, appreciate that. Um, first responders, um, I got you guys. I love you. I'm going to support you as much as I can. I always try to talk about you. Shout out to the first Native American nominated to run the interior of the department. Showbiz 62 is right on point. Love you, bro. You know, that's very, very important. Because we need more diversity. Um, I know we're not ever going to be perfect, but at least, you know, um, that team is rattling the cage, which is what we need. And they bring a different perspective. Women bring a different perspective. Diversity brings a different perspective. And, you know, as Biden and Kamala Harris, God bless them both, pick their team. Excuse me. I know they can't do everything. And have a complete rainbow coalition. But from what I'm seeing right now, they're doing pretty damn good, despite what they're coming into. And believe me, it's going to get harder, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's like rebuilding my Jets team. We have to totally tank to get Trevor. Hold on. I want y'all to see my Jets. Die, live and die. Ride and die on my Jets. We, we got to totally blow it up just to get what we want. So they're going to have to go in, clean out all the unnecessary bullshit, and then start their new. But the one thing that I think we as Americans can do is do our part. Goes back to the top of the show, one of the main themes. Are you a patriot? Do you want to give up your nylon stockings and chocolate like they did in the 1940s? 
That's what I'm asking you. Are you a patriot? If you are a true patriot, whether you're Black American, White American, Native American, Spanish American, Asian American, whatever you are, if you are a patriot, you need to be out there doing your very, very best. Now is the time for all of us to give our very, very best. I don't want to hear, I have to stand on the street corner and sell drugs. I got to join the Crips. I got to join the Bloods. That ain't no family. All right? Again, that's mind-blowing you. That's a cult. It's a cult. Anything that you got to join that you can't get out of or they got to kill you before you can get out of it, it's a cult. You may feel good while you're in it, but your family, your friends are in jeopardy. If you belong to an Aryan nation, if you belong to white supremacists, you're in some type of cult. And believe it or not, you probably got ancestors that have black and Native American blood in there, which makes you having that blood in you. If I bleed and a white man bleeds and an Asian American man bleeds and a Native American man bleeds, what color is our blood? It's not different. White people don't bleed white blood. Black people don't bleed black blood. It's not different. It's red, bro. Brothers and sisters out there, it's red. Come on, wake up. Don't be fooled by trinkets and gold. One of my favorite artists of all time, simplistic but genius, Mr. Bob Marley. Do not sell your soul for silver and gold. Yes, things may look right, Rosie. I got to join this group. They all think like me. They all act like me. They all want to gangbang like me. But still, are you doing harm or are you doing good? And are you a patriot is what I'm asking. We got crooked people on police forces, crooked people in politics, racist people up and down the line in every walk of life. They're always going to be there. Always going to be there. That's why the jails are full of people. It's a business, yo. But what you got to do as a human being is pivot and decide, okay, today, do I help that old lady across the street or do I just sit here and watch her struggle? Do I give the man on the corner the last dime I have in my change or do I just sit there and watch him beg on the street? Don't ever judge a person. You don't know their circumstances. You don't know what they're going through. And I'm not saying you have to do any of this. This is just my opinion on my humble little show. Boom, from the front seat. So there you are. You have some wisdom. You have some pearls I've been dropping on you. We have some great stories. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, um, next week, December 26th, I'm going to plan something special. Um, you know, what's up, Ankit? Namaste, man. Um, my man Ankit back there. Love you too. From India. Um, Next week, we're going to have something special. Hopefully, by then, I'll be able to play some real Christmas music. If not, you know, I'm going to be talking about some things concerning um, how people are dealing with the last week in 2020. What are you going to do? How is it going to work? Um, what are your plans for 2021? How are we going to pivot as a country? Will we get a stimulus check by then? Will Congress get their shit together up in D.C.? Those are all the things that we need to know about. Because I got to tell you, right now, it's piss poor. If any of us did our jobs like that, if I did this show from the front seat, like they're doing their job up in D.C., they kick me off the air. You know what I mean? Because it's not working, whatever they're doing. You know, and don't forget, follow all my sponsorship on the bottom. You know, Afterglow92416, um, BootsyCollins.com, TonyCam.com. Check it out. P Funk Radio and get on the Funk Bus Philly Phil on speaker.com. So y'all check all that good stuff out, man. And it's beautiful. Um, it's nice to be um, you know, flapping my wings a little bit out the nest. Thank you, IBM.tv and the Dollar Store Lynn Shepherd, all the people that helped make this show possible since May. Um, you guys are always gonna be in my heart. Sing a Christmas Carol next week. Yo, you got that, Brooks. I definitely will. You know, I don't know if it'll be like chestnuts roasting on an open fire or maybe, you know, something else. You know, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I'll make sure I'm on that Dr. Brookenstein just for you. Again, mad shouts out to everybody. 
Mad shouts out to everybody who supports this show, who continues to support this show. If you have something that you want me to support, I'm an equal opportunist. I don't mind. I'll come on um, and I'll talk about you. I'll pump your stuff up. I'll try to promote it as best I can because the more we promote each other, the more we promote each other. See what I'm saying? And it's not always about a money thing. Although monetarily speaking, you know, it will become that in 2021, which is why, you know, I'm getting sponsors because, you know, people have to get paid. I got to get paid something. So, you know, um, it's very important that as musicians, artists, entertainers, we do keep track of what we're doing and we do monetize things. And so people do not take us for granted. Okay. And that was my discussion about the pros and cons of the streaming services. I get what they're totally doing and I'm not mad at it at all. You know, I, I hope we could just come to some kind of real understanding on how to make it work for people of limited income and limited means. All right. Again, I wouldn't be able to do this show without my main man, main funketeer, uh, my brother from another Another mothership, Mark Lee, behind the glass. He has a wonderful show on Monday nights on IBM.TV. It's brutal. It's honest. It's upfront. It's in your face, and you will love it. Um, you know, and, and, and he's a good man. And also, um, Dr. Tawana Anthony, she's got a new show dropping on IBM TV coming soon. I don't know when it's going to drop, but I know it's going to be hot because Dr. Tawana Anthony is all that and a bag of chips. So, you know, for me personally. I'm getting ready to sign off and go get into some other stuff. I'm going to leave you with one of my own songs. Again, I had to give a disclaimer, which is fine. Um, I sent it in. I sent my permission to, to the people that deal with that stuff at IBM. And I'm, I'm going to leave you all with, with revolution because right now we are in a revolution. Um, we are all the keepers of the funk. So I want you guys to always remember, you'll always have a place to go. You can always ride or die with me on funk from the front seat. And I hope everybody had a good time today and let's get out of here. Go call. Mark Lee's in the house. And kids in the house. All my bunker kids that are watching today are in the house. Are you with it? Come on, rock, rock with me. Detroit, Motor City. Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, y'all, Woo! Oklahoma, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia, Maryland, D.C., what's happening, Chocolate City? Yeah, Nappy Head wants to be at the ball in 2022. Y'all got to make that happen, George. Come on, thank you. Jersey, Plainfield, home of the peace song. New York City, Staten Island. I love you. Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, Strong Island, Bayshore. Shout out to my man, Gordon Thomas. Gary Gordon. Daryl Holliman, Clinton Avenue, Smith Street, the development. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Harrison Avenue. Let's go out west. Lisa Graham up in the West Coast, Washington State. The Art Awareness Project is blowing up, y'all. Oregon, Portland, Maine. California, Zora, I love you out there, Zelda. I love you, Christella. I love you, Dawn. Hawaii. Samoans in the house doing the hump the hump, doing the hump the hump. China. Japan. India. Do what? Australia, what's up, all my lovely mates down under? England, y'all. Paris, France. Germany. Netherlands. I just met a beautiful young lady from the Netherlands. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. Let's circle back around the globe. Alaska, where you all at? I want you down here. Teach these people how to deal with the snow. Utah. North Dakota. South Dakota. Arizona. Nevada, y'all. 
Again, this is my own music. I have permission to play it. I sent it in. So please, don't strike IBM. We just have it fun. Spiritual revolution, y'all. Remember, keep faith in your heart, love and faith on your mind, and everything will work out, I promise you, every time. This is number nine, Funk, from the front seat. I love hanging with y'all, and don't forget, first responders, you know how we do, we always gonna love you. So as we get ready to get out of here, I'm going to leave you with the Keepers of the Funk, which I do have permission to play. So please don't strike us for this. I'm begging you because I don't like strikes. I didn't do good as a kid in school. I always had strikes on my report card. But I want to do the right thing by people. Keepers, one of my sponsors, Afterglow, 92416, Benevolent Funk. Gotta stay safe, y'all. Let's get lifted. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. By the way, this song went number one somewhere on one of the top charts. Proud of them. And don't forget, check out Bootsy Collins, his new thing. If you want me to stay, brand new video just dropped. As well as the brand, brand new one, Creepin'. Bootsy Collins, man. Power of the one. Thank you, Bootsy, for always giving us inspiration. Thank you, Peppermint Patty, for always doing the right thing. We love you. New York Jets, BTS, Jets, Jets, Jets. Funk from the front seat is the one. Wear your mask. Hand sanitizer. Be a patriot. Funk from the front seat. I'm your host, number nine. Happy head funk army. Man, shout out, Mark Lee, making all the possible for me. I love you, bro. We're going to leave y'all with that. It's a toast to the boogie. Keepers of the funk. We are all keepers of the funk because the funk is the essence of the one, and the one is on the power of the one. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Great show. I'm going to run this back later for those of you that missed it. Y'all stay safe. i see you next week. Dr. Brookenstein, I have that Christmas song for you, brother. Peace!